What's up? What's up, Wes? How you How you doing? Long time. Good, ago. good. How you doing, yeah. buddy? Doing good. I just worked out. Um, oh, it's always a good start to the day. Uh, woke up, got a cold start shower. to the day. Holy shit! I've been home from work for an hour and a half. Dude, you what? You 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 work in the wee hours? I don't actually. <laughs> I actually know what you do. What's your job? Uh, I work for like a produce farm. So like you like you live in the uh, you live in a rural area or? Uh, well, no. Like I live in a city decent size windsor like three hundred thousand people but we're surrounded by like uh the rest of the county is all like little small they're farming uh like my dad grew up on a farm like 45 minutes away and it's called wheatley um but uh yeah now there's all kinds of marijuana farms and everything so it's fucking wild yeah i got you yeah we i do this investment club with my family and we're investing in this uh company called green thumb i think they're based in michigan i don't know if they're they're in they're in canada too but green them green thumb oh green thumb yeah i think they have like a bunch of retail stores all over michigan um and they're they perform decently well you know it's, it's, it's weed everybody likes it it seems like exactly right it's not going away it's like the, it's like owning a liquor store like you're gonna be all right yeah, once you get that liquor license, if you're like a yeah. if you're like a gas well, like you station, can't, how you make not, money? Not, it's shit in fucking, well, in, sorry, I keep swearing, but uh, in Ontario anyways, um, like it's all monopolized by the, the, the like the, we go to the liquor store, there's the, the LCBO, it stands for the Liquor Control Board of Ontario, uh -huh. and they are the only ones that are allowed to sell liquor. And the beer store, literally just called the beer store, they're the only ones that can sell beer. So it's like, and it's like, you don't get like, oh, well, yeah, well, it's on sale over here. It's like, no, you're going to pay their price or you're not going to drink. Now it's being sold in like uh, some grocery stores. I think convenience, some convenience stores have beer. So it's on its way, but they still, those stores and stuff still have to buy it from the Liquor Control Board of Ontario. So they can't sell it cheaper or else they won't make any profit. And like, I used to work for the, the LCBO and uh, like, it's ridiculous. The, the like charge like they would like i don't know what do you pay for like uh 40 ounce of like i don't know what do you what you drink or but well like i get i usually just drink guinness like a four pack i think is like 9.99 and then the oh, liquor yeah. tax the, they have it it's called the soda tax in, in illinois it's like i don't want to miss say, say what it is i think it's like 10 to 11 percent added on to it yeah we pay for yeah we pay like beer if you get 20 like we we go by two fours we call them 24 cases uh -huh. that's like our big one um but we we pay that's like i get blue labat blue it's like 40 bucks for a case of beer but when you bring the empties back you get 10 cents an empty yeah i was I, just in i was just in michigan so they have <clears throat> you have to put a deposit on the beer before you buy them right because that's like your incentive to return the cans yeah, so that's basically what ours is too. So like, you bring a if I got an empty two four case, I bring it back and they give me two fifty or two two twenty back. I mean, yeah, it's good for recycling. I suppose. Or I don't know what the hell it is. I'm I'm out of my mind. I'm pretty stoned right now. After you but... after you told me your your little your story with your son yesterday, I was curious what the uh, the drinking age <laughs> the drinking age was in Canada. I well, I know I know people in Detroit will go to Canada when they're like in high school or like they're freshmen in college, whatever you know, enjoy their yeah enjoy their their youth you know they don't need an id but it's so it's it's 19 in most of canada and then in like quebec it's yeah 18, quebec's 18. 18 i think i think like a province out uh west like saskatchewan or something might be 18 too i'm not 100 percent sure or maybe one of the territories like the yukon or something but i was uh, i was trying to do the pro do you ever do you ever go on sporkle and do like geographical quizzes never even heard of it it's it's good. They have they have like a bunch of different categories. I was trying to. I oh, cannot, I would bomb. I suck, man. I could not remember. Like, like I I know, but like I good at knowing where like the provinces and the territories are. But like if you just like gave me a map of Canada, like I could tell you where all the provinces are and all the territories and that. But I couldn't like point out uh, like this is Alberta. Here's Calgary and here's Edmonton. Like. Yeah, dude, I barely know, like, I barely know North America, like, forget Europe, there's like a, try and name oh. every country in the world, I don't know if there's like more than 300, and I have a little cousin who like, for some reason knows like all the Eastern European countries that are like a bunch of extants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, like, I think there's something like 210, 211 countries or something. So what is it? Where Where is Windsor? Is that in uh, Ottawa, Ontario? Is that Ontario. Ottawa is also in Ontario. Which one's the Provident? Providence? 
Ottawa? Ontario is the province. O- Ontario is the province. Okay. Ottawa's yeah. Ottawa is just a city. Um, <laughs> it's the Ottawa is also the capital of Canada, like Washington D.C. Right? Like. Got gotcha, you. Got gotcha, you. Gotcha. But Toronto is the provincial capital. So it's kind of funny because it's like Ottawa is the country capital, but in the province, Toronto is the capital. <laughs> That's interesting. So it's so, okay. Windsor is three hundred thousand people town. Like most of them, did they go to like a soccer game or what? Like the Spitfires for entertainment. I mean, yeah, Spitfires are big here. Uh, the arena holds probably about eight thousand. Well, like more uh, affordable tickets than like just driving to a big city to see a game. Oh yeah, but I mean, a lot of people just go over to the Red Wing games too, right? Like that's true. I mean, they're uh, not cheap. Like I paid, I paid eighty dollars for tickets in the I don't know three hundred section. Yeah, you were up pretty high. I sat up there before with the obstructed view. At least though, they got the big TVs. Like I was up there the one day, me and my ex, and we were sitting there, and I'm like, like we could have just stayed home. We're just we paid eighty bucks to watch the game on TV. Okay. Okay. All things considered, like you have like a perfect view of the ice. Like when you're a little bit closer, like like the angle kind of cuts off like the boards a little bit. Like, so you can't really see like the, the, the ice that's closest to you, but you don't get to see the jumbotron and you're like, depending on what side you're on, you're staring at the behind the gondolas. <laughs> so like, yeah, you get to see some celebrities, like, you know, see Stevie Y or some of the fucking guys trying to go take a piss. <laughs> oh, <laughs> waiting, yeah. waiting for where, the bathroom <laughs> where we had, when I first moved to Tampa, where we had tickets, um, was like literally the, um, the row, and like it was and then like if you and there was like suites but if you went like over there would be like 10 15 more rows so we weren't like the highest but right in front of the suites like i remember the first game the first lightning game i ever went to or I, the first lightning game i ever went to against detroit um Eiserman was still playing but he was hurt mm-hmm. and like he was literally sitting like where my hand is this is how close he sat to me the whole game like i was sitting here and there was like a bar like just like a count, and then that's that was like the separation between the stands and the and the box that the suite where the like the visiting team is in. So yeah. literally, I like turned around and I was like, "Hey, Mister Eisman, can I can I get my jersey signed?" And he just was like, "Man, look at all these red jerseys." He's like, "I'm gonna be here all night if I sign one." And I'm like, "Yeah, no problem." And he reached out, and shook it, shook my. He's like, "I'll give you a handshake." I'm like, "Yeah, oh, okay, cool." I was like 15. I'm like, "Yeah, dude, I love that." You'll just walk up to anybody and be like, struck up a conversation, ask them for something. Oh yeah, straight up, man. Drapes. Yeah. He hates me. Chris Draper hates me. Just that one day, I guarantee you he hates me. He just like put on like a like one of those faces just to be presentable. And then after that, he's like, fucking hate it when guys do that. No, no, like at first when I got the picture with him, he was like smiling and I like because I kind of stopped and I just like turned around because I was looking for my buddy and I'm like oh shit, I know that guy. And I'm like, and then you know, like that second where you're like, I know that person. And then you're trying to think of who it is. And I'm like, I looked and I'm like, oh, I know that person. I'm like, oh, it's Chris Draper. <laughs> and so he was like, and, he, and I'm like, hey, Mr. Draper. And he's like, hey, what's going on, man? And I'm like, mind if I get a picture? He's like, no, not at all. I'm like, yeah, I'm just a big Wings fan. You know, he's like, yeah, yeah. And uh, and then like I, I ran into him a second time. And that's when I asked him to come on the podcast. And he's like, hey, like you got a business card? And I'm like, no, not on me. <laughs> he's like, it's tough. It's tough, isn't it? And he was kind of like smiling at first, and then he got into like this serious face. And he's like, "It's tough, eh? It's tough when you meet somebody and you want them to do something for you." He's like, "And and you know, you, you don't have anything to present them with, so that I can get a hold of you. You know, I can check your stuff out." He's like, "It's tough. It's tough." He's like, "But good luck with everything." And he just and then like I saw him again when we were leaving the arena, and I was like, "Hey, Chris," and he was like, "Hey, man," and I was just like, "Oh yeah, he's rattled." And then we were at the bar and he was like, point, my buddy's like, yeah, yeah, Chris Draper's pointing at you. And he was like standing there with Sean Horkoff. And I'm like, well, great. I'm like, hey, if anything, there, there's buzz for the podcast. Draper and Horkoff are making fun of me. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I, it's tough. You like run into someone like kind of famous. You don't have like an Instagram account with like 100,000 followers that you can pull up. Like that's what people do if they're like in public and they want to talk to a stranger. Like, who the fuck is this weirdo? But if you just show them like that, like for, for some reason nowadays, that's your credibility. Like, how yeah. Many, oh, okay. How many followers Insta-famous. you have? Yeah. What? Famous on the gram. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the wings a little bit. Yeah. That's what I was gonna make a video about earlier. They um, uh, month of December, you know, they weren't doing too good, and then they um, the last two games they got Bertuzzi, they got Fabry back. Well, Fabry's been back for a couple games. Fabry's got like three goals now. And um, Cider and Raymond kind of turned turned the heat up on the season. I was trying to figure out through 40 games. They still haven't missed a game um, through 40 games. What they did last year. Let me see if I know you don't really care about statistics. Do you want to hear them? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so they they haven't. Yeah, they. Sorry, I, I just when you said neither of them have missed a game. Yeah, neither of them have missed a game in the NHL, which is exceptional. Like, watch out, Philly Phil. They coming for you. Fresh. <laughs> I don't like. I don't. I was like, Dad. Uh, Zadina's coming back in a week. He's like, uh, I don't. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> like, who cares? Who said that? It's like not interested in Zadina coming back. It's just nice that Fabri and Bertuzzi are here. Yeah, Maybe. Fabri's playing sweet too. Yeah, I didn't. I missed the last two games. Um, I don't well, know. Well, I obviously I didn't see the last night's game because I was at the Spitz game. Yeah, I mean I was watching the Avs play the Hawks. That was, I don't know what's going on with the Avs. They they're hungover. They got a couple of their better players like on the IR. They lost Kemper. They lost Kadri. It's tough. When you have like a lot, of, you don't have a lot of room, and you got to lose players to free agency. But it was still cool. yeah, yeah. It's well, it's hard that, and then you get hurt, and like that was the thing with Tampa, man. No one gets hurt there. Like I mean, well, Kucherov, except for Stammer. <laughs> yeah, well, Stammer that one time, but like then he came, like he came back in that first in that first cup run, scored that goal in game three or whatever it was, and then after yeah, off came again in for one shift and scored. Yeah, well, like that's just poetry though. Like you know, you couldn't have written that better for him to miss all that time and just want to be a part of it so bad to just skate in like nine seconds and not do anything would have been shitty. But like the fact that he goes out, gets a breakaway, scores a sweet goal, it's like justifies that. Like okay, at least I'm a part of this thing. Yeah, I'd much rather have a player that doesn't miss any games than somebody who, like, is, like, I don't know, good comparison, scores, like, 90 points a season but misses, like, 20% of the year. That There's that always that option. Like, so if he misses 20% of the year and still scores 90 points, I'm paying him. <laughs> well, it's, it depends on when they miss. You know, they don't, you yeah, don't, want, them miss, you you don't want them missing the playoffs. Okay, so back to back to – Like Edmonton, like, if, if McDavid or Dreisaitl get hurt. Like, imagine both of oh, those guys fuck. got hurt at the same time. Like yeah, that's what I mean. That could just that would just dismantle your team. Yeah, no, you build your team like like Seattle or like Vegas or maybe not Vegas. Like Vegas when they you know went to went to the Stanley Cup Finals. I don't really pay that much attention to the Western Conference. Like recently, like I'll what I do like every night I'll look at the NHL app and I'll just check to see who scored. Like my favorite players. Like <laughs> I usually go and see if Ovechkin scored. I'll see if Cole Caulfield scored. I'll see if Matthew scored. I'll see if McDavid scored. Got thirty five goals right now. Um, like. That's just that's just how I pay attention. So it's not it's not really like that that like deep into analysis. I just have like a broad idea, and then I see that they're like beating the beat the Kings. I think they beat the Oilers. Like and they're shutting teams out. Like they're on six they're on a six game winning streak. And they're who's that? Sorry, the Kraken. Oh yeah, yeah, they've been firing man without chain. <laughs> yeah. Oh okay, wait. So what'd you? Okay. Okay. Wait. Speaking want... of speaking of walking up to random people, I eh? <laughs> yeah. Wait. Before you say that, okay, let me just say through forty games last year, Razor had thirty two points, uh, eleven goals, and twenty one assists. He had the longest streak he had with no games was fourteen. Cider, right? I guess I should say right now. I think he has twenty nine points. Yeah. Right now he's twelve, seventeen, and twenty nine. So who Raymond. Raymond? Yeah. So he's better than last year's first forty. That. That that kind of surprised me because no, he's three he's three points worse. He's he's, he's kind of like quiet good. Like you don't you know what I mean? He's not like flashy, so you don't yeah. really pay. Attention. And then it's like what? Like I didn't realize he had twelve goals. I would have put him at like nine or something. Yeah, well, I mean, he had well three points last night and then one goal the game yeah, before true. that. So he went from twenty five to twenty nine pretty quickly. Uh, but Cider, that's what I mean. You know what I mean? It's not like he's and he's not on the highlight reels with his flashy plays and deeks and all that. So he's just like quietly is an all star. Like sweet. Yeah, Cider's more of a person you notice even when he's not doing well, like statistically speaking, because he's got control when he has control. Of the but I know he's made making a couple turnovers this year that people are like, oh, he's not, he's not great. But he's he's probably the most he's nineteen. Favorite. He's in his second year. Nineteen twenty or twenty twenty one. Whatever. I don't. Still I don't only like in his second good. season. Yeah, he's that's right. I forgot he was. He would be on that team North America if he was North American. <laughs> for the, uh, well, they had a team. Well, they had a team Europe or whatever, didn't they? For the world. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They did. Because uh, like some countries didn't have like I don't think Germany had a team, so they did like Europe. Are they? Uh, are they doing that again? Like this? Like during like the? I know the All Star break is coming up. Well, they were supposed the World Cup. You mean? Yeah, yeah, the World Cup. Of they hockey. were supposed to do it next year in 2024. And bring it back every four years, but they just announced that Toronto's getting the All Star game next year, and that's when the World Cup was supposed to go on during the All Star break. So the NHL effectively is saying, "Well, fuck the World Cup." I don't. I like the World Cup. I thought the All Star games were supposed to go to warm weather cities. <sighs> going to, they're going to Toronto in the middle of the winter. Yeah, they went to Toronto with uh, like 2000, I think, when they first opened that arena too. 
Well, they I don't understand why they haven't gone to Detroit when they have the newest, like, they got a new arena. Why are you not going? Like, you know what I mean? They should go around to different ranks. And, it, like, when a team gets a brand new state-of-the-art facility, they should be like, oh, yeah, let the world come and check this out. Yeah, I wonder who decides I don't know. That. Maybe they don't even want to host it. <laughs> Those are uh, just more hockey. I don't care. More hockey is always fun to watch. I don't pay attention to the All-Star game at all. I, I can't stand the for the team thing, like, I wish they'd just go Western Conference, Eastern Conference, and, like, play a real hockey game. Not yeah. like a three-on-three. Three. Like, no one cares. Yeah, I mean, I guess, obviously, convoluted. some people care, like Gary Bettman. I just don't care for it. Do you at least have, like, a favorite event? Like, I like watching the shootout. I like watching the skills. Yeah. Yeah, I've always liked watching that, but I just don't care about the game anymore. Uh, yeah, I like the fastest skater. I always liked watching the – and they used to do the puck control relay when they had to, like, go through pylons. Yeah, Dodzuk, like, like, going around the Gatorade bottles. I remember that. Yeah, man. Paul Korea was phenomenal at that. Um, hardest shots, fun. I like the one where they, like, sauce it over the little bars or whatever and into the mini nets. Mm-hmm. Like, the accuracy. I guess that's the accuracy shooting now. Dude, they tried doing that in Vegas last year. I think it was last year. It was so brutal. They were, like, outside at night, like – at the MGM Grand at the pond. And yeah. <laughs> the yeah, audio, the see audio was terrible. <laughs> and you yeah, couldn't see that the was, fucking thing. It was a good idea, but like, yeah, it was it was too dark. Yeah, and then they like pre-recorded them like somewhere during the day. Like Joe Pavelski and some other guys were like shooting at this like giant, like like 30 by like 10 thing of like uh playing cards. <laughs> oh my god. Because <laughs> it was like ba- it was like Vegas themed. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I do remember when they shot at those cards, yeah. Yeah, of yeah, course, I Pat. Remember that. Pavel- I think Pavelski won that. Yeah, I think he did, too. Uh, I seen something funny the other day. Uh, somebody, uh, Wayne Gretzky posted a picture, uh, like him and his daughter, uh, both wearing jerseys for uh, his new pickleball franchise. Smoke, yeah. And oh, like, pickleball. Uh, his, huh? Pickleball franchise? Yeah, there's, there's like a pro pickleball league now, bro. I don't, that's like the wooden paddle. It's like it's like tennis, but with a wooden paddle. It's like tennis and squash combined. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah, I don't. I, I have no idea what it is. Like I've I've tried to like watch like watch it on the internet, and I'm like I don't know what they're doing. So I just like go away. But yeah, he owns a team in Vegas. The Vegas, uh, they got a really cool name. Where does uh, he live? Is he like a Canadian resident, or is he in California or somewhere? No, uh, I'm pretty sure he just lives in like Arizona. Guy lives wherever he wants. <laughs> yeah, he's probably got places everywhere. Like you know how rich he is. He's a he was freaking knighted by the queen. I mean, he's doing those like He also he also got the Order of Canada, which is like be like kind of like being knighted by the queen. Um, Sidney Crosby also just received the Order of Canada actually. Connor Bedard's probably going to get it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah. He uh, I mean, he does those like MGM Grand commercials. I don't know. Okay, yeah, was... so this were this was where I was going with this. So he posted a picture of him and Paulina and it was like he had a jersey on it said Gretzky 99 and her said Johnson 1. And um, he was like, because she's married to Dustin she's Johnson. Married, okay. Yeah. The golfer, so, right? Uh, yeah. So, uh, and then he posted it. Like, the, the comment I seen, the guy's like, he used to respect you, Wayne, but not when you're on a bet nine nine commercials every 45 seconds. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> Gretzky literally uh, commented on it. And he was like, I am not currently, nor have I ever been associated with bet nine nine, but you do have my permission to sue them because you sound upset. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, imagine getting chirped at by the great one on Instagram. I'd put that on my wall. Fucking yeah, oh, yeah. Frame I'd probably that. kill my, like, I'd probably tell people about it and then just, like, feel bad and kill myself a week later. There's no better hockey player to get roasted by. I didn't know he right. was. Right, and what a just care. He's just like, you seem upset. You sue them for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, and it's just funny because the guy immediately said bet 9-9 nine, nine because I think a lot of us, I don't know if that's an American app, too. Um, but like we have commercial, we it's here, and uh, no a lot idea. of people think it's like Gretzky's app. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think uh, uh, George Saint Pierre does uh is their like spokesman. Oh yeah, the uh, the MMA former UFC guy. Yeah, yeah, that guy's cool. Um, My fighting days are behind me, but I am still competitive, eh? And I use Bet Nine Nine. When I was a younger boy, I used to get bullied, and now I kick the shit out of everyone. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, he does. I get all this. I get all this income from that. It's a great accent. Okay, so what was this? What was this story? You and your son last night. Well, like I don't know where it was the story. Not my son, by the way. <laughs> no, he's your I, relative. He's your distant relative. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll say that. Sure. Might as well be. I mean, just pretend like he is. 
Yeah. Well, okay. So, uh, a lot of buzz around the arena, around the city, around the team. So that's good. Um, he evidently had a full no trade clause in his OHL contract. Like, you know, you're a hot shot when you have a full no trade in junior hockey. Kingston at the Kingston Frontenacs. Is that where he Frontenacs, was at? Yep. Yeah. Um, who are owned by Doug Gilmore? Doug Gilmore, Philly, Philly, former Philly player, Toronto and Chicago. Doug Gilmore. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know that. So like what? So like what? They had to make like an outrageous trade to get rid of that. Like no. Well, trade? oh, see the people. I like when you don't know it. Like it, they do seem outrageous, but like it's really not that outrageous of a trade. But um, so yeah. Anyways, it was getting narrowed down, and apparent or like. A, Took like three or four days after the World Juniors because apparently the the day after the gold medal game is when he found out that um, he was getting returned to the OHL and uh, like Kingston's GM called him right away to like let him know that they heard and they were trying to trade him and where he wanted to go and it just apparently they were like working out trades and he was nixing them all and like the talk was that he was going to London because they're owned by the Hunters who used to play in the NHL the Hunter Brothers mm-hmm. like everybody wants to play in the, for the London Knights pretty sure they'd pay them under the table and buy them cars and shit and just put them up in fancy condos without billets but um like Patrick Kane has told some wild stories about he he played for the London Knights for one year he's yeah, that's told where some everyone wild went. stories it's a real like Tavares I don't I don't, I don't... Tavares played for them for like half a season. Kadri played for them too. Okay, but so, um so they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The front next got a second rounder, a third rounder, fourth rounder, two fourth rounders. Yeah, seven picks six, and fifth, one and roster fifth. player. And the other player is uh like plays in the USHL, so he's probably gonna go to college. So that's probably not even gonna that was probably just a throwaway. But uh Ethan Medema was actually a pretty good player. Kingston will probably try to now build around him. But the picks, you got to give up that. Like, you know what I mean? You're getting the star player. He's a super rental. But also, they're not going to trade him. Like, you only have so many years in junior hockey, right? Like, one to three, really? Mm. Realistically, one to five years. Um, So, like, you got to you gotta be trading and making those. Um, But an off-the-wall trade in the WHL, I don't know if you saw that one, Um, was uh, – Owen Zellweger oh, yeah, yeah, played yeah, okay. for uh, Canada's World Junior Team. He got okay. traded um, to Can Loops. Is he a Ducks Sharks prospect? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Zellweger. Yeah, I don't know about any of these players until they play in the WJC. I like vaguely remember most of the first round draft picks after that. I don't even think he was first round. Yeah, yeah. No, he's a Ducks. He's a duck. Yeah, he's not a first defender. rounder. But yeah, first... so him and Ryan Hofer, another Canadian World Junior player, both got traded to Kamloops for four roster players. The next four first round draft picks, mm-hmm. um, two seconds, a fourth, a fifth, a third, and a sixth. Yeah, those are that is hilarious, and they're all from like different teams. It's just like so. Well, Windsor's were yeah. Win- so yeah, Windsor. Um, so d- d- go back to that. Yeah, Windsor ended up doing really well with the Shane Wright trade because I mean you bring in the superstar, obviously the best player in junior hockey, coming back to junior hockey, got a goal and an assist last night. He was unbelievable. Uh-huh. I feel like he should be more like when he comes back after playing in the NHL, he should be more like a McDavid, where like if he gets the puck, he's just gone and nobody can stop him. Uh-huh. But, I mean, that, that'll that probably come because he was like that in years past in the OHL. So, you know, his first game, he, he hasn't played in a couple weeks, probably a little rusty. But, um, yeah, like nobody had a chance against uh, in a face-off against him. Like, it was ridiculous. Like, the puck was dropped and he had already won it back. And, like, the other centerman every time was just standing there, like, looking around. And I'm like, wow, yeah, you you got fucked. But <laughs> Yeah, I don't completely get that, why he's not playing the AHL. I know he's, like, maybe definitely. Oh, not- you have to go back to juniors. You can't play in the AHL. So if you Cana- go Canadian, play in the World Junior Championships? If, you, if you're from the Canadian Hockey League when you get drafted, uh-huh. you can't, unless you're a European player. North American players can't. Like Canadians and Americans can't play in the AHL till they're twenty. He played AHL games this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a conditioning loan. He, he it was like a five game loan so, before okay. they sent him to the world. It was basically to to send him to get him out of Seattle's lineup, have him play some a, hockey before sending him to the World Juniors without having him to go back and play in the OHL. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. See, I still don't. 
So you can, you're probably, let's say you're getting paid under the table, potentially you're not making any money in the, in the Canadian junior leagues. Like, I, I mean, oh yeah, they make like 50 bucks a game. Well, like where I was going with that is like, if I was Canadian, maybe like I, I'd want to play like D1 hockey. It just seems like college colleges would be like a lot more fun. Like you're on campus, you know, it's, there's like a community right there. You're in North America. Maybe it might be, if you're uncomfortable, like going to a different country, you know, you're 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 not good at moving around but like but you're but, still not making money <laughs> yeah but canadian junior hockey you're having all those experiences that you'd have in college but you're only in high school so that's even better like i i, I lived it for a couple of years vicariously with you know some of my buddies that were uh, that played in for the spitfires and like just the like the times that were had were just phenomenal and i was like yeah man like this is just you know everything i wanted was to be a pro hockey player it's just cool to have the friends to be around it to kind of like I said, live vicariously through it, but yeah, college hockey would I, be a different, I mean, again, a different experience. It's just, I guess, like if you're going to be a first round pick, probably juniors, because then you can get to call it or you can get to the NHL quicker. But if you're like a fourth, fifth round, like, you know, if you're not Connor Bedard mm-hmm. or yeah, like yeah, even yeah. a first, second round pick, you, then I'd probably be like, you know, if I was ranked like 250th in the draft i'd be like yeah maybe i'll go to college because then you get the four years of college under you before you go to the nhl and yeah like like, there's a potential for education um well the ohl pays college education for their players too do do most like canadians do is there like like pretty i know there's like toronto university that's the only one i can think of like they go go into like Tor- like Canadian universities or a lot of people try and like cross the border and go to like American ones. Is it like a split? Cause like, I don't know. I don't No, I think like, more the people opposite stay ever here. happens. I think more Canadians stay in Canada to go to university. We, we have a better education system. Except for you. <laughs> well, yeah, but I was living there in high school. Okay. Got you. Um, all right, let's talk, let's go back to the Red Wings a little bit. Um, they have, who are they playing next? Okay, they they're playing Columbus Blue Jackets. This you know, coming tomorrow, off tomorrow, right? Coming off, yeah, on the fourteenth. Then we got Colorado Monday and Arizona Tuesday. Yeah, so they're still at home, and then the road they're going on the road to the West Coast. Like the Avs haven't looked that good, so that's a that's a that's a game that they could win. And then they got before oh, the like, All-Star, let's fucking beat Columbus first before the All Star break. Uh, Montreal, San Jose, Philly, those could be games they'll win. Maybe not against the Islanders. But yeah, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. I mean, they have like their they have like the players we want to see back in the lineup. It's it's and then like player like Bergeron is performing what beyond expectations. He's got I don't know how many points he has. It's like twenty like eighteen points in, in how many games? Twenty seven games, something like that. Yeah, it was pretty dynamite. Yeah, like Prashant made a post saying in the last thirty years, the only Red Wings rookie forward to record more points than Bergeron through their first 27 games are oh my god this this third name is hilarious Lucas Raymond Dylan Larkin and Dallas Drake <laughs> remember that guy? Dallas Drake oh yeah I won the cup with them and oh wait oh yeah and he played for them at the beginning of his career dude I played against his the team he was coaching when I was when I was in like the when I was in Nye Hill when I was probably like a bantam went to Michigan it was like the Oh fuck! I do not remember the name of the team. I shook his hand. I uh, I don't know what it was. It was a milestone goal that he had scored in a, that year. Is that one year he played for the Wings at the end when they won? Um, but it was something, something. He, I don't know if it was a milestone point or a thousandth game or something like that. But um, I had like nosebleed seats, and an old neighbor of mine um is like the head uh of like fan experience at the arena. He used to be like the head on Usher. Now he's like the head of fan experience or something. So I always just used, you know, he'd always hook me up with better seats. <laughs> gotcha. And uh, this game, it was like, I had nosebleeds and I went and seen him like five minutes into the game. I'm like, I can't sit up here anymore. So I went and I found him and I'm like, Hey, he's like, where are you sitting? I'm like all the way up. He's like, not anymore. He's like, come with me. And he's like, this is the only seats I got open down here. He goes, but you, you got to be quiet. You, you got to be nice and quiet. Eh? He goes, it's the family's, uh, it's the player's family section. What the fuck? And I was sitting next to Zetterberg's wife and I was like, okay, like I drool over you, but <laughs> now I'm doing it right on you. It's like, you don't know. And me. like Drake, anyways, Drake's like kids were right in front of us and they yeah. had all these signs. So we couldn't even watch the game because all his kids kept jumping up with these signs. Like, we love you, daddy. Now, That's like, how the other kid, I'd be like, bud, sit your kid down and tell him to put the sign down. But it's like, can't really say that when his kid had dad's Dallas Drake. 
No, you absolutely can't. And he also let you go into that section. Like, right. Like, hey, get out of here. They're like, who are you? I'm like, I'm Steve Eisman's brother. It's like, I'm a bigger fan than you are this guy's son. Give me a fucking break here. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I have way, way more passion for that. Um, My dad was in the league. I'd be sitting in a box, not down here with the bums. You just got lucky by, by stint of birth. You never, <laughs> yeah, you, exactly. you, didn't earn, you didn't earn this like I did. Yeah. All right, bro. I gotta, I gotta go make a shepherd's pie. Wow. Look at yeah. You. I'm a, uh, I can tell you all the ingredients. I'm really excited to make it. I haven't eaten yet today. I usually don't eat until like around this time. Cause I wake up at like eight. I don't wake up at two in the morning and go to a farm. What do whatever you do, but I don't wake up at 2 a.m., but it's close. Yeah, close enough. Well, it was good chatting with you. Yeah, um, you too, buddy. Catch up some other time. So, um, yeah, that's, that was a good conversation, buddy. See ya. Yeah, sounds good. Talk to you later, man.